Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to verse 3 and 4 of the Idiom's Guide to the Tower of Barbs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, buckle in, because we have so, so much to talk about. So congratulations, you've made your way past floor 20, but now you are faced with the 30s and soon to be 40s. And in this video, I'll be doing my best to help you through that. Now, let's start from the top, or the bottom, really. The first thing you'll notice after clearing floor 20 is that you're going to be encountering new weapons, new armor, and a whole boatload of stuff. Now, single-handedly, the most punch thing in the face in this game is floor 20. <laughs> Getting past that. Jesus. <laughs> Anyways. The reason why floor 20 is so painfully bad um, is because it is where Let It Die says grind. And grind hard. And a lot. Like too much. <laughs> Keep going. There you are. Finally. You got there. So yes, if you are not accustomed to finding weapons, uh, I would highly advise a collector class at this current moment. Every boss is a very high damage sponge where you're going to need at least three or four star weapons to take them down or just really chip away at them slowly with a bunch of other weapons. But I would highly advise leveling things up. Yes. So that is my number one thing that will make your life extremely easy. And also something coupled with that, this is more of a 40 tip, but why not give it to you now? Get accustomed to the wiki as soon as possible. Be efficient because if you're not, you're going to be here a lot longer than you'd want to. What I mean by use the wiki is stop flying blind <laughs> go open a map on your day rotation um, you'll just see it when you go I'll leave links to each little helpful thing in the wiki maps and when it comes to upgrading stuff and what is good to upgrade well things are good based on what weapon you have a problem with if you have a lot of problems with sharp weapons like machetes and stuff like that then upgrade an armor that has good defense against sharp stuff like that and I'll be honest none of it really matters as long as you just keep upgrading it just keep pushing now another thing to tell yeah I've dropped the accent <laughs> with the stupid voice the number one thing that I could give you guys in this is that you are trying to make it to floor 27 kind of 28 but anyways floor 27 the reason why is because single-handedly the most important thing in let it die it makes the game it unlocks easier <laughs> mode and we'll get to that but it's called the wandering shop so to recap you're gonna be facing new weapons new armor all those things uh, get ready to learn more <laughs> and understand patterns more Second thing is you're going to need to level up your gear. So if you're not accustomed to that, get accustomed to that. Uh, pick up materials, uh, write down a piece of paper what you need, four scrap, uh, two this, three that. Um, furthermore, look at the wiki. Wiki actually has everything. If you want to upgrade a certain sword or a weapon or armor, it will tell you how much that costs. So you can in your head do the math and say, okay, I'm going to need at least th uh, 13 wire mount in total to upgrade this thing fully. And this and this and that. Great, be efficient, awesome. Also, uh, one thing that you may find when you're upgrading your gear is that, oh, why does it cost red metal or certain high-end resources? I don't, even have, I don't even have access to that. Well, you will. Again, 27th floor, we'll talk about it in a minute. The second thing, and I'm putting this one in there for me, Gato is a bitch at this point in the game. <laughs> now, the reason why Gato is a pain in the ass is because you don't really have any pre-game to fight him. Last time we fought him, we rinsed the floor with him. Well, they just gave him twice the health, uh, twice the amount of damage, and he reacts twice as fast. Great! Oh, so fun. <laughs> Anyways, I will link you to a video in the description of us taking on Gato, the highest po well, no, <laughs> floor 40 Gato, and I'll explain all of his moves. He, you know, he only has, like, two missing from that video, but if you see that video, you see what I'm talking about if you can take him down then you absolutely can take down the one lower than him so yeah uh, all helpful things that will show you how his pattern works where what his openings are in so that when you do go to fight him you don't have to waste kill coins or sorry death metals or anything like that good good Next, I, I'm not trying to be cheeky or cute, that's generally it. <laughs> um, Gato is a huge wall when you surpass him. You'll have uh, access to more floors which can drop you more resources that can help you upgrade your gear. And again, you have to be upgrading that gear. Again, I would suggest a collector class that you use for this period in the game. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. You're, you're beating a couple floors, you're getting past Gato, you're getting past Cohen and Jendai. Congratulations, by the way. Um, when you start to make your way to the floor 27, this is single-handedly the most important tip in all of Let It Die. The reason why is because a while back, the designers made this super 
amazing update change uh, where they introduced something called the Wandering Shop. Now, I'm sure you guys know this at this point. The guy that crafts you your weapons, yeah, well, he has a brother. He can appear on random floors that he can appear on. Two places every ten floors. Anyways, not the point. The point is, is that the deniers of the game put um, a preset wandering shop that appears in two locations on certain days. Those days, if I'm not mistaken, are Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So yes, that is when the wandering shop appears. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Remember that, please. Now, how you get to the wandering shop is you need to go here, here, and then here. Boom. Um, now, the reason why you want to get to this specific wandering shop is because it holds almost every high-end resource. Uh, this means every type of red metal. Um, red metal is something that you get for defeating bosses in the 40s and down. Uh, so not even in this floor range. But there are some special armor, such as the DIY attack coat and that set that requires DOD red. Um, so, just buy it from there and you'll have a super leveled up armor for killing the 30th boss as well as weapons, um, and this is where the game, you at this point, if you can make it to the wandering shop, you have no excuse for not three-shotting almost every enemy. And I don't mean to say that like an asshole, but that is the most efficient way you can do that. Okay, so the things you're gonna need to know about the wandering shop is that it restocks every hour. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up there with a huge sum of money. I'll talk about how to make money in Spilithium. I think we've already done, but we'll cover it again. <laughs> um, you're gonna wanna go up there with at least 200,000 kill coins. Cool? It can be less, but you wanna kinda get the most out of it. Cool. So you're gonna go up there. You're gonna find the wandering shop guy. You're gonna buy whatever you need. Maybe you want an armor set that requires DOD red metal or steel or whatever it may be. Maybe ultra pure iron or something. That's a high, high end resource. Anyways, do that grab what you need. Awesome. Now you're going to make your way back to an escalator and wait there for an hour. What I do is I just open up my phone, set an hour timer, boom, I go on my computer, walk away, come back when it's been an hour. Um, you're not having to grind like a crazy person, farming every floor just to get the one resource to maybe spawn, because let it die can kind of be a bastard like that. So yes, this is the most efficient way of doing it, which is really not doing a lot. But anyways, you can get a maximum of, depending on how much you wake up and depending on how much you want something quick enough, I uh, can get a, maybe 10, <laughs> 10 resources of anything you want at a given time. Now, congratulations, you, you have infinite resources of all varying degrees of quality. Awesome. Now, how do you pay for this? <laughs> um, well, the, the best way to make money and let it die still to this day is the TDM. Now, some tips for farming the TDM, sort by rank and go to the very bottom, but be warned some people mess with the system and I don't really want to go into rank, essentially rank, uh, when you sort by rank, that is the amount of fighters you have and the combined number of it. So if you have a bunch of grade 6 fighters, it's going to make you have a high rank, but anyways, you're not going to have that <laughs> at this point. Anyways, point being is that some people can game the system and it can be a bit finicky. Also, some people that have a decently high rank maybe don't have a defense. So when it comes to the TDM, that's my best advice is to sort by rank and go to the very bottom. But also flip a coin, <laughs> just go to a random person. Also you get so much stuff by even just throwing your uh, hat in the ring when it comes to the TDM. So definitely do that. I would highly <laughs> advise that. Also, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I abandoned the accent instantly. <laughs> I can't, I gotta explain things clearly, especially when you're in this floor range. Cool. Okay, so if everything's gone to plan, you farm the TM. You've gotten a ton of money. Congratulations. <laughs> You've made your way up to the to the wandering shop floor. Floor 27, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. <laughs> you've purchased all that you need and you've leveled up your armor. Keep leveling up your armor. If you need Spilithium, also farm the TDM. I should have mentioned that. Spilithium and kill coins you'll both attain that way. Cool. Great. There is literally no excuse <laughs> for you not to one-shot the 30th boss and just eviscerate 440. That is kind of where the game gets gets to its point, where again, it does say grind. 20 and up is telling you, you it's a hard cap, you need to make sure your gear is plus 4, or plus 5, or plus 6. Um, and again, just chip away at it ever so slightly. Yeah, <laughs> great. Okay, so I'm hoping that you made it past the 30th boss. <laughs> Congratulations as well. Now. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to focus on, if you haven't already, open up the map in, on the wiki or just Google. That's something you're going to have to get real <laughs> used to when, you, when it comes to 40 and, and 30, honestly. <laughs> Hopefully a redhead or listen to head. Go to Google, open up a tab, say let it die, um, scratch farm. 
Let it die tuber farm. Let it die bullet metal farm. Let it die that 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 farm. <laughs> Whatever you need, and uh, there'll be videos, some of them even mine, uh, a section to that. Reversal metal farm, things like that. Uh, mushroom farm, uh, cloth farm, uh, silk farm, things like that. Um, that can help you maximize getting specific gear because waiting an hour can be a bit iffy especially if you just want to play the game now when it comes to the 40s you're not going to want to go up a certain pathway and realize oh this doesn't lead me to anywhere where i need to be now when it comes to the 40s or 30s and up um you need to take down every boss in order to fight the final boss so yeah or to get uh, the door to be unlocked that's how you unlock doors and let die is you kill the bosses cool um, I have a series, a bunch of videos that I go through killing each high-end boss. If you really want to just be extra prepared, I'll leave links to those in the description down below. But what do we do when we have a question, let it die? We type into Google, let it die. Best path to 40. And you'll get something, I guarantee it. There's, there's, everyone's been there, dude. Everyone's been there where we needed it, and there's always that one guy who's gotten there first. And it's a champion about it. Cool. So that will tell you the right way to go. If I find it, I'll link it in the description so that you don't have to uh, go through that hell of searching for it, of typing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, so now that you've had your path, I hope that you've decided on an armor. One of the things I should have told you guys <laughs> a couple, uh, like at the beginning of the video is whatever you do, Find one armor that you enjoy, maybe you like what it turns into, maybe you enjoy what it gives you in terms of resistance. Find one armor and level that up first. Um, and constantly keep chipping away at that. Because I made the mistake early on of dividing myself far too much because I liked the look of certain armors and I didn't really know what I wanted. Spend some time in the wiki, find what armor you want, choose it. Go head on with it and just keep leveling it up. Don't spread yourself thin. That's something that you can do in endgame. You can test out every armor. As long as you have one base strong armor that can give you endless armors. Because you'll increase your survivability. Same thing with weapons. Don't dance around too many weapons. Pick one weapon that you like the uh, combat style of. And then upgrade the shit out of it. And boom bam. Congratulations. <laughs> You're being efficient. Cool. I say this to myself, my because <laughs> back in the day I was super, super not. I thought all the weapons were cool and I wanted all of them. And no, don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Now when it comes to 30 and up, this is something that is a little bit more apparent um, when you're fighting forcemen, but pick up mushrooms. Read what they say, figure out if it applies to what your playstyle is, and take it. Uh, there are some things like uh, invisibility shrooms that are amazing, ones that don't have a, a crazy negative, although those ones are good as well. Um, ones that give you immortality, or sorry, invincibility, um, but you can still be hit and staggered, so be warned of that. Doesn't make you impervious to physics, <laughs> I suppose. Anyways, be on the lookout for mushrooms because they are really, really helpful here, especially if you're having struggles with a boss. Maybe you don't have a, maybe you don't want to invest the time into leveling up a weapon. I, I feel you. It can be a bit of a grind sometimes. Um, so maybe you want to use a sting shroom, uh, which will amplify your damage but make you weaker. Uh, but then again, maybe you've leveled up your armor, or maybe you just really know the boss to back to front and you don't get hit it that much anyway. Uh, those things are all something that you should consider. Great, and my last tip to you for fighting the floor 40th boss, which is a time, is again, level up your armor as high as you possibly can. Again, utilize the wandering shop always. Also the TDM, because that can give you amazing resources and boatloads of money whenever you need it. They inbox it to you. Anyways, <laughs> that's matter. And a big part about beating the final boss and the best practice I could tell you um, is not to watch a video on it because it's not that helpful to instead fight all of the mini bosses a lot and if you want to get better armor and you want to mess around in that sense that's the best way to do it as well when you kill bosses they drop their factions allegiant type so cone will drop dod milk will drop from u10 um war assembly from Jendai, etc 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 also one thing to note and this may be a little bit of a spoiler for the final fight Whatever weapon and armor you go into that fight with, you'll have to take it, tear it down. So just be careful <laughs> if you're picking like a saber, little pokey sword. Uh, it, that's hard to counter, really. So yeah, <laughs> be careful with what you choose to upgrade. Uh, I would highly suggest things like the like the murderer's hockey stick and or the pickaxe. Those are slow weapons that can hit hard if you do it correctly. And yada yada yada. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, that's that's kind of it. Honestly, if you're able to get to floor 27, 27, not 37 or anything like that, 27, uh, you have access to infinite um, resources of varying degrees of painfully annoying qualities to attain. Like, if you're trying to farm reversal, dude, buy it. Buy reversal. Don't ever farm it. It's the worst fucking farm in the game. <laughs> buy reversal, please. For me. Also, make money via the TDM. Uh, pick an armor set. 
I've, I've covered so many weapons, armors on my my channel. If you just go to our playlist of Let It Die, I got you, bud. Um, <laughs> I've, we've been doing that for, for months. Anyways, um, but yes, uh, after that, you're now on to Forceman. But we won't cover that in this video. I will leave a link to that if you're ready for the sequel slash spinoff of the Idiom's Guide to the Tower of Barbs Forceman Edition. But ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That wraps up a series that I started with a goofy accent, but I realized in order for me to be ready to do that accent, I have to think about it a lot and in order to explain the things I need to explain. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do the dumb accent when I'm trying to break down things. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for putting out with me. I hope dearly that this helped you through your climb throughout the Tower of Barbs. Again, Wandering Shop is a godsend for new players and old <laughs> old players as well. I wish you luck when climbing to the very tippity top. Um, and know that the game is only getting started from here. It's time to climb to heaven. But as always, guys, thank you so much for listening as always. And hopefully, I'll see you at the top. Bye, guys.